G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday evening here in Australia and the markets are back under 1.3 trillion again. Bitcoin holding on for dear life for that kind of $31,000 level. And oh, we're all just on bated breath at the moment waiting to see can Bitcoin hold the line? Will it make its move up or will it simply crumble and just start to crash down? Very hard to know, but again, the Bitcoin chart is so tight at the moment, and we'll get on to that shortly. Look, BTC dominance, 45%. Uh, volume, uh, not a whole lot there. BTC price, like we said, 31 sort of thousand, and GUI down to 16, so cheaper than we've seen it in a while. But not the cheapest we've seen it. We have we got down to the single digits down. I think we saw it at seven or five or something, and that was unheard of. That was amazing. But obviously, you know, with the markets moving around, people are jumping in and out of whole coins and in and out of stable coins and things like that. So that is what really drives the market up. People are trying to chase some of those small, um, I mean, not that small, but anyway, some of the smaller altcoin pumps that are happening on occasions. Well, let's have a look, I guess, what's happened in the last 24 hours. Has anything done well? What's pumped, if anything? Nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, clay token. There we go. 3.7%. Waves, Ethereum, Classic. And then we're basically into almost, you know, all the sort of US uh, pegged, you know, dollar peg coins. Not exactly, but look, hardly any gains in there whatsoever. And again, considering the market is down, uh, that's not to be unexpected. And the volume is just very low at the moment. You know, again, we don't have a lot of volume. It really, really is small. So what about losses then? We'll probably see something a bit more substantial in the losses. And there we go. Axie Infinity. So it was pumping and everyone was jumping all over it. And now it's starting to turn around. Like most things, unfortunately. Like even Stacks had a pump this morning. And they've probably lost half of that already. You know, Rune Chain going back down. Synthetics going back down again. You know, it was down at $5 something a while ago. Is it going to get that low again? Who knows? But hence why I said, you know, and again, never financial advice, but just be very careful with the altcoins at the moment. You know, they even in bear markets, there's still things that will pump for a day or two, but and then unfortunately they dump more than they just pump. So unless you're able to get in and out quick, you're probably just going to get wrecked. But again, never financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. For me, I'm just not playing in the altcoin space at the moment. You know, I mean, if I see synthetics down at five dollars again, I may uh, throw a couple of dollars at it. And again, you know, maybe Ave under two hundred dollars, I'll throw a couple of dollars at it. I see Matic under fifty cents again, maybe I'll throw a couple of dollars at it. But I really am just focusing on really Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment. Uh, they are my kind of two buyers that really come rail, shine or hail, uh, I'm pretty much always buying those, except for when they're in price discovery. When they go into price discovery, I'm still buying a little bit, but a whole lot less. I'm focusing more on the altcoins then because the altcoins, uh, and again, you know, some people will say Ethereum's an altcoin. I really do consider it kind of one of the biggest stable coins now. It really is up there with Bitcoin. But yeah, when they're in price discovery, I start to focus on the altcoins because they are going to pump next. It's generally the way it goes. Again, the big caps. So Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, then into your mid caps. You know, again, some of these things like synthetics and Aave and Polygon and things like that. And then you go into your low caps. So, you know, things outside the top 100 uh, as such. So, yeah, not looking good in the altcoin space whatsoever. But again, you know, if you got in about two weeks ago, again, synthetics was at like, yeah, five dollars. Ave, I think it was down one hundred and ninety, one hundred and eighty dollars. So you know, if you were lucky enough to get in, then you're still up. But if you're in the last couple of days to maybe week or so, I mean, just look at these charts. Down, 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 down. They all look pretty depressing. All right, let's go over to the Bitcoin chart. Let's have a look. So again, oh, Bitcoin. It is just holding on for dear life to that. 31 kind of thousand dollar range again exactly right at the bottom here and then really we're waiting to see if this kind of down here will hold like i said that you know kind of thirty thousand dollar range exactly if we lose this kind of mark where we are and again the volume is just really really low we've broken down between these key levels but then we can have a look 
on the MACD. This looks like it's trying to come up a little bit, but then it's just rolling over again. Uh, and both of the lines are starting to roll over. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Again, I have my fingers crossed and I just find it hard to believe that Bitcoin is gonna be able to travel sideways for too much longer. It really does look like something has to happen soon. But again, that's not just always the case. It could actually travel sideways for quite some time, weeks, months, absolutely possible. But it just generally doesn't do that for too long. And we've been going sideways-ish for quite some time. I mean, again, hyper volatility sort of all over the place. And then the volatility is just getting less and less and less. And yes, we are going down, but we aren't really setting new lows. We're just retesting old lows. So yeah, if again, I thought it would have come last week maybe. And then I've been saying I would be surprised if it doesn't come this week. Now that I've said that, it's probably gonna travel sideways for another couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, just to really try and shake everyone out. Because at the moment, there is a battle going on between the bulls and the bears. And there's a story that I'll get onto that makes me really happy, because it seems like the big players who are probably trying to push it down are, fighting resist, are finding resistance from the little guys, i.e. me and you, so I really, really like that. So let's move on from the charts because they haven't really changed in quite some time. Right, this is super interesting when I read this story. So we got all excited about Paraguay. Going to turn Bitcoin into a, a local tender, a local currency. Seems that might not be the case. Did the IMF get in their ear and apply a whole lot of pressure and they have suddenly now changed their tune? Now, not that they're against Bitcoin now, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a, a currency, a legal tender. So a group of Paraguayan lawmakers presented a Bitcoin bill in the National Congress last week, but it turned, about, turned out to be a very different proposal than what crypto followers expected. The bill seeks to control and regulate cryptocurrency transactions and establish taxes. There is no mention of declaring Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrencies as legal tender anywhere in the proposal. So it sounds like it was a, a bit of a beat up. Now, I think originally they were going to do it and I really do think the IMF uh, and you know America and other places like that that really want the dollar to survive have got in their ear and made them change their tune. Now, not completely, but you know to basically the way that I think America uh, wants to regulate it. So yeah. Is that good or bad for Bitcoin? Oh, yeah, I don't know. A lot of people were getting really happy thinking that Bitcoin was going to become legal tender. And in all fairness, I don't think that's where, it where its destination lies anyway. People don't want to spend it. They will not want to spend Bitcoin like on a daily transactional basis until it, you know, finds its, you know, kind of happy place wherever that is 250,000 maybe it's you know 20,000 or 180,000 or a million or 10 million you know we just don't know yet but it needs to become like you know more regular money where it just holds a price level at least somewhat consistently excuse me at the moment it's just way too volatile people simply want to buy it and hold it for better days they don't want to spend it so we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens, but it doesn't look like Bitcoin's going to become legal tender in Paraguay. Right, so Will Clemente says that Bitcoin uh, supply shock could ignite a significant BTC rise, and a supply shock is still in play for this week. And that's what I thought too. I said that last week. I said if it didn't happen last week, I would be it'd be hard to imagine it lasts more than another week, i.e., this week. Now, again, don't get me wrong; doesn't mean it's going to happen but it does just seem like it's ready to pop, you know. And the scary thing is, what happens if it pops, but it's to the downside instead of the upside where we all want it to go? That's really going to hurt. But yeah, hard to imagine Bitcoin stays like this for another week. Uh, but again, it's not like it's never gone sideways for, uh, you know, weeks and months. It definitely has, but it's usually ticking in a direction, whether it be uh, sort of up, well, usually when it forms a bottoming pattern, it is ticking up slowly. At the moment, it's more sort of ticking down than up, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, this is what made me really happy. Ah, uh, that's Will Clemente. Yep, this is the one. So, Willy Wu claims that smallholders or entities that own less than one Bitcoin can 
sorry, BTC continue to stack Bitcoin as they outpace the selling of larger entities or whales. Well done, my friends. Well done. Nice, strong diamond hands. You don't have to buy at the bottom. You don't have to sell at the top. You just have to buy and sell somewhere in between. And that is where a majority of the money is made for 99% of basically everyone. Uh, again, I brought up that uh, sort of saying that one of the Rockefellers said a long time ago. I think it was the Rockefellers. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it might be another one of the big families. Uh, the Rothschilds. No, sorry. It was the Rothschilds. So the granddaddy of the Roth Rothschilds, I think, said he never sold anything at the top and he never bought anything at the bottom. He made all his money buying and selling in between, but still buying low and selling high. At the moment, Bitcoin $31,000 is literally 50% off from its all-time high. So congratulations to everyone who's simply buying and holding and not worrying about whether it goes lower. Because if you fundamentally believe in what's going to happen and all the, you know, good news stories that we're seeing about the fundamentals, not the price at the moment, unfortunately, the fundamentals, the chances are strong that Bitcoin will get to its old all-time high and then not only get there, but completely eclipse that. So that's, again, I've said this before, that's the way I think. I'm happy to buy Bitcoin at 31000 because if it goes to 64000 I've doubled my money. If it goes to 100000 I've near sort of tripled my money and some and then so on and so on and so on and that's what i think so when it gets into price discovery i'm not jumping into it i'm still buying it i'm basically always sort of buying uh, bitcoin but i definitely start to focus on the other things when something's already starting to run you really miss that you've got to try and look for the next thing all right let's moving on and this is interesting so you know at the moment everyone's happy to buy it and again like me uh, and, you know, a lot of people will probably tell you it doesn't matter what price it'll go down to. Uh, I'm holding and I'm buying. Well, here we go. More than 65% of survey participants said they would keep holding Bitcoin if the assets price dumps by 90%. So down to $3,000. But would they really? It's easy to say that you would do that. Whether you actually would is another question. And for me, if I was still holding my Bitcoin and it got down to 3k, what would be the point in selling? I didn't buy any for 3k, so if I'd managed to hold it by all the way down to there, I literally would just keep buying. I would just keep stacking it, uh, you know, waiting for it to go back up. Because there would be, a, again, another black swan event or something could push it down to 3k. I can't see that happening anytime soon, but it's not impossible. We need to remember 2018 low, was 3,200 or 2,800 actually I think and the low uh, last year I think was 3,400 uh, something like that so it is possible that we could dip down to see those prices again at some stage I just think it's unlikely all right ARK Invest so buys another 54 million in Bitcoin adjacent square stock so obviously Kathy Woods is still super bullish on Bitcoin and while she's not buying just Bitcoin itself, she's bought Bitcoin, she's buying things that also have another you know, uh, revenue. It's not just simply buying Bitcoin and waiting for better prices. And that's something that you need to understand is while I'm not a person who invests too much in stocks, again, things like micro, you know, if you really believe in Bitcoin but you want to, you know, see if there's another way you can, you know, increase the yield will buy stocks of companies that have a lot of bitcoin so again micro strategy uh tesla you know square if bitcoin does really really well then it is automatically going to push the you know price of those stocks up now again i'm not giving you uh, any financial advice and saying that's what you should go and buy but if you really like bitcoin and you're looking to diversify maybe look at buying some stocks and again we brought uh, I bought that story the other day about some of the indexes that you can buy now. They're going to have DeFi indexes where you can buy into a, you buy one token and it basically gives you exposure to a whole stack of tokens. Those kind of things sound very, very interesting. A little bit like a uh, ETF or an ETP, really. All right, last but not least, Binance. They burn another $390 million worth of BNB tokens. 
but unfortunately it didn't do anything for the market they didn't pump uh, usually when they have burnt uh, significant amounts of BNB they get a bit of a pump but at the moment people are just too spooked and they're not going anywhere near uh, well some people are but most people just aren't going anywhere near crypto at the moment and it's hopeful that we really have shaken out you know all the complete speculators and now it really is just those you know the retail people left because if you you are retail if you are not institutional money there's only two types institutions and retail so I'm retail uh, and pretty much anyone who's probably watching this video is retail and it's good to see again that sorry I uh, hear it is that you know retail are holding they're not selling and again hopefully if Bitcoin really does dip down they stay strong they simply hold and buy more that is what will make Bitcoin strong is that you don't get caught up in these hype cycles you buy and hold and again maybe you know sell some when it really is high and then try and buy some more back in when it's low although it's hard to time the markets sometimes you get it right and other times you get it wrong and that's okay in the end if you sold for a profit it's all good just you know again never offering financial advice but just be careful about ever completely scaling out unless there's something better you think you know you think you found something better and if you have then all good you know let me know down below what you think is better than bitcoin just so i know so uh, if it, you know if the time comes and it's time for me to sell all my bitcoin i couldn't imagine i'll ever do it i'll have a bit of a tip of what the you know the next best thing is all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment things aren't looking great but hold tight and i'll see you next time